extravagant but controversial. A scene in the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics has angered many for appearing to mock religious symbols. Others say it was a display of inclusivity. But was the host country France trying to convey a message? And if so, what was it? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mohammed Jamjoum. Demeaning, disgusting, and disrespectful. Those are some of the words used to describe a controversial scene during the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in Paris. Organizers have apologized for the performance against the backdrop of the River Seine that many saw as a spoof of Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper painting. Comprised of drag queens, a transgender model, and a singer made up as the Greek god of wine, it provoked outrage among some Catholics, other Christian groups, and Muslims around the world. France has a strong Catholic heritage, but also a long tradition of secularism. Blasphemy is legal and considered by many to be an essential pillar of freedom of speech. Supporters of the opening ceremony praised its message of inclusivity and tolerance. So, was this scene simply an example of freedom of expression, or could France have been trying to advance a secular agenda? We'll discuss all this with our guests in a few moments, but first, this report from Victoria Gatenby. A performance during the Paris Olympics opening ceremony outraged many Catholics, Christians and Muslims around the world. Al Jazeera doesn't have access to the pictures, but critics say the scene mocked Jesus through what many saw as a parody of Leonardo da Vinci's painting The Last Supper, including drag queens appearing to portray the apostles. The French Bishop's Conference released a statement saying we are thinking of all Christians on every continent who've been hurt by the outrageous provocation of certain scenes. We want them to understand that the Olympic celebration goes far beyond the ideological biases of a few artists. Organisers apologised to anyone who was offended, saying the Last Supper was not the inspiration for the scene. And clearly there was never uh, an intention uh, to, to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. If people uh, have taken any offence, uh, we are of course really, really sorry. France has strict secular laws separating church and state. Drag queen Hugo Bardin performed in the opening ceremony and says it was a celebration of inclusivity, tolerance and free speech, values that France represents. Personally, I think they shouldn't have apologized because an apology means recognizing a mistake, recognizing that you deliberately did something to harm, which was not the case. We are here to celebrate France in its diversity. Some Catholics attending church in Paris said the controversy was overblown. About this person or that, I say God is the one who judges. It's not our place to judge. I'm mostly disappointed that people are choosing this time of unification to separate, that there are people with different opinions who are battling each, each other and in conflict with each other and feel like they have to win in this category and not in another area such as sport. The Olympic Charter expresses the values of the Games as excellence, friendship and respect. Yet many are questioning whether the Paris opening ceremony struck the right tone and whether it included respect for religious beliefs and freedom of speech. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our guests. Joining us from Paris is Simon Cooper, a journalist and a columnist for the Financial Times. He's also the author of Impossible City, Paris in the 21st Century. In Bristol is David Goldblatt, a sports journalist and author of The Games, A Global History of the Olympics. And in Rome, Gerard O'Connell is a Vatican correspondent for America magazine and the author of The Election of Pope Francis, an inside account of the conclave that changed history. A warm welcome to you all and thanks so much for joining us today on Inside Story. Simon, the Olympic Organizing Committee of Paris says that this was not meant as a take on the Last Supper, that the tableau that was presented was actually intended to interpret Dionysus and raise awareness of, quote, the absurdity of violence between human beings. You've lived in Paris for quite a while now. What are you hearing from friends and neighbors and colleagues, and what is your take on all this? Well, a poll by Harris showed that 86% of French people were happy with the opening ceremony. It was not 
a parody of Da Vinci's Last Supper. It was based on this Dutch painting, as you say, 100 years after Da Vinci, which depicts the Greek gods with Dionysus, who's represented at the Olympics in the ceremony by a naked man with, with paint over his body. And that is the inspiration. It's showing the Greek gods in revelry and celebration. It's appropriate because they were painted or they were supposedly posing on Mount Olympus and athletes competed in the ancient Olympics naked. And so it didn't really have anything to do with Da Vinci's Last Supper, except that the painter, like many painters of his era, was inspired by the kind of shaping by Da Vinci of how you can represent people at a meal. But he's depicting a pagan festivity. Dionysus, the Greek god depicted, is also the father of the goddess of the Seine River. The Seine River is where the ceremony takes place. So I'm afraid that the Catholic Church and its protests just misunderstood what was being depicted. Um, Gerard, let me ask you uh, about what Simon just said. He says that the Catholic Church misinterpreted, you know, what this was all about. I mean, from your perspective, why has there been so much outrage and offense that was taken? Well, the reaction has been mixed in reality. Uh, the first statement came from the French bishops. Uh, one would have imagined that they have some better insight into what is being depicted in their country than people outside the country. Then there was a strong reaction in America. Uh, some reaction in Italy, some other countries. But uh, I myself watched the opening ceremony with a group of people, some priests, some other people who happened to be coming for dinner. And I, I actually hadn't twigged or hadn't noticed offense in that original presentation. Uh, for a start, I mean, Da Vinci's Last Supper, you have uh, the 12 apostles. Here you had, I, I think, up to about 17 people in, in that scene that is a controversial scene. Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, we're living in a polarized society, and there's also polarization very much in France, as we have seen in the recent elections, but also in the church in France. We see polarization the same in the United States uh, and in other countries. And so uh, the reaction has come not just from religious leaders, but also political leaders. And as you said in your introduction, also I see the... Uh, Muslim Council of Elders, led by the uh, uh, Grand Imam of al Azhar, has come out strongly on this question. I, I think there's various uh, readings of it, and uh, as uh, I think Simon at the beginning said, uh, it's uh, there's interpretations as what was actually the scene. Mm. Was it Da Vinci? Was it a later artist? Da Vinci was 1494. Was it a later Dutch artist who uh, was taking some inspiration from Da Vinci and was portraying something else? Mm. I, I really don't know, and I'm not in a position to, to judge what this was. But I do know that the reaction among the French bishops was very, they saw it as a mockery and as a derision of Christianity. Uh, some bishops in the United States, some very well-known bishops, took the same stance. Mm. Interestingly, Pope has not spoken on this, and I will come to this later, when, if you wish. David, uh, from your perspective, what was your initial reaction to this controversy that erupted around the opening ceremony? And do you feel that ultimately this overshadows the athleticism that is supposed to really take center stage and be on display? I don't think it overshadows anything. I just think it's concocted rage, for the most part, from people who were looking for a fight and have actively and deliberately misinterpreted what is in front of them. Uh, I mean, there is no doubt that the, um, you know, the source, the idea came to the producers. They said themselves from the Dutch painting. Um, and if people have got a problem with Greek gods being depicted in an Olympic ceremony, whatever the format, boy, they're going to have a problem with the Olympics as a whole. The ancient Olympics were a pagan festival. Uh, I mean, as well as being a celebration of pan-Hellenic culture and civilization, they were primarily uh, a religious festival uh, in celebration of the god Zeus. 
And, you know, when de Coubertin concocted his own version of modern Olympism, he absolutely acknowledged and absorbed those pagan roots, thought that the modern Olympics should have a spiritual dimension, but absolutely not a Christian one. Um, so it seems to me entirely appropriate that you have a bunch of Greek gods um, you know, celebrating. It doesn't seem to me that it's anything to do with uh, Da Vinci or the Last Supper. And I just think, you know, the fest, the ceremony as a whole was a piece of lovely French whimsy, you know, part Cirque du Soleil, part the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, and I think it is an entirely inappropriate and concocted form of rage to be complaining about it. I mean, let me say, as a Jew, had they um, decided to recreate the parting of the Red Sea uh, on the Seine and filled it with uh, the equivalent of Paris pride, I would not have had a problem. In fact, I'd have been laughing my head off. Simon, to David's point that this is a lot of concocted rage, uh, there are commentators that have said that this controversy is just one more example of the culture wars that play out in the 21st century that get amplified by social media platforms, by the 24-hour news cycle. I mean, what do you think? Is this ultimately just all overblown? I think there's a lot of culture war entrepreneurs who immediately jump in. So in France, on the far right, Marion Marshall Le Pen, Eric Zemmour, of course, they immediately had to come in because it's an opportunity for publicity. Interestingly, the leaders of the far right party, Rassemblement National, Marine Le Pen and her sidekick, uh, Bardella, they stayed quiet, knowing that it was quite a popular ceremony among French people. So you have the culture war entrepreneurs, Donald Trump included, who immediately have their views. I think that the French bishops were genuinely offended by a misunderstanding. It reminds me of, uh, I think it was the Anglican Church complaining about Monty Python's Life of Brian. It's quite hard to be taken fully seriously if you complain with a misunderstanding about something, a form of art that you haven't fully grasped, which was like with Monty Python as well. So, yeah, I, I think that what news do you make of an opening ceremony? Some people say it's fun, some people say it's beautiful, some people say it's boring, but the story you have to make afterwards to compel attention is there was a controversy, there was a fight, and so this is what's happened. It's also really startling the kind of misunderstanding that continues to persist about Da Vinci. I noticed even in your subtitles it was saying that it was based on Da Vinci's Last Supper. So I do think that there's a lot of kind of unimpressive response going on here. Uh, Gerard, you mentioned a couple of moments ago that you wanted to talk about the Pope not having spoken about this yet. So I'm going to let you go ahead and make the point you wanted to. Yes, so on Sunday, in other words, the day after the opening ceremony, many had expected the Pope to say something. In actual fact, he spoke, but he didn't refer to this. He said, uh, the scandal is that we have uh, a lot of famine in the world. We have a lot of investment in arms, we have, which are fueling wars and conflicts around the world. And he said, that is the scandal today. And uh, I, I think it's interesting. He, he spoke earlier about the Olympic Games traditionally being a moment for truce, where fighting stopped. And so I, I think it's interesting that he, even to this day, he has not made any comment on it, nor has the, the Vatican media office, nor any really serious senior official in the Vatican commented on it. I, I myself, when I watched it, I, I, I thought it was, uh, first of all, a very original presentation, seeing, what was it, 35 boats moving down the Tiber, the, the Seine, sorry, uh, and uh, I, I thought uh, some people have criticized the fact of Marie Antoinette having a, a, a head under the arm, the singer. Uh, some people said, well, you know, this is encouraging the, or giving some support to the idea of the death penalty. Others saw in this metal horse uh, going down the Seine, uh, an image of the woman on the horse, an image of Joan of Arc. Mm. And the, the lots of people take lots of things out of it. I, I, I think I, I found it significant that the Pope said nothing. David, I want to talk about something. What he said was quite different. 
Right, right. Uh, David, um, I want to look at another dimension of all this, and I want to talk to you about something which I believe you wrote about, something else related to the Olympics that caused outrage. Um, this one pertaining to the French Malian singer Ayana Kimura. Uh, she performed during the opening ceremony. She's the most listened to French female singer in the world. Uh, but when it was first announced that she would be part of the lineup, she became the target of racist abuse. And there were even polls conducted in France in which the majority of respondents said that she was not a suitable standard bearer of the French language and culture. What does that say about where France is right now at a time when it is on the world stage hosting this ceremony? Well, it says there's quite a lot of noisy racists and nativists in France, but they are not the majority. And one of the fabulous things about Nakamura's performance was that it was in front of the Académie Française, um, the organisation that polices, you know, the grammar of the uh, and vocabulary of the French language. And Nakamura has been relentlessly criticised by the far right in France for not speaking French for introducing slang, um, African words and Arabic words into the language. And I thought it was just fantastic that she was showcased um, in front of the Académie Française. And that seems to be a message that says France is changing and France is open to its internal cultural and linguistic diversity and celebrating it. What a great thing. All right, another controversy at the Olympics invo involves basketball player Hélène Ba. She says her dreams were shattered when the French Basketball Federation announced a ban on players competing in religious clothing. Now she's launched Basketball for All. That's a movement that aims to confront perceived religious discrimination in France and provide a safe space for Muslim women athletes. This is her story. J'ai grandi comme n'importe quelle fille en France. Et là, d'un coup, à partir du moment où j'ai commencé à mettre le foulard, il y a énormément de portes qui se sont fermées. Je vois l'invisibilisation, je la sens. Et, et moi, ce que je dis toujours, c'est qu'ils ne peuvent pas nous exclure encore plus. En France, l'interdiction du port du foulard s'étend. Et aujourd'hui, elle est arrivée jusqu'au sport, ce qui fait qu'aujourd'hui, on ne peut plus jouer avec notre hijab de sport. On avait un match portant et avec un gros enjeu. Et là, mon coach m'appelle et il me dit que l'arbitre ne veut pas que je joue avec mon couvre-chef sportif. Et, et je reste sur le banc. Et à ce moment-là, j'avais envie de parler à personne. Franchement, pendant tout le match, j'avais plus envie d'être là. Forcément, il y a eu plusieurs filles qui ont été interdites de jouer et qui ont fait face à cette interdiction. Et donc, il y a des clubs, des présidents, des joueuses qui se sont mobilisés. On a créé le collectif Basket pour toutes qui lutte contre les discriminations dans le basket français. Après, il y a, il y a des moments où j'ai pas, euh, pas du tout envie de venir. Je le fais aussi par résistance, je pense. Euh, on veut pas nous voir, mais bah, bah, je serai là quand même. Le monde et la France ont les yeux rivés sur les Jeux Olympiques et Paralympiques. On sait que ça va être un grand moment de médiatisation, qu'il va y avoir plein de choses de médiatiser. Et on sait aussi que c'est une opportunité pour nous de, de dénoncer ce qui se passe dans le basket. Là, on se retrouve à lutter pour quelque chose de basique. Et j'espère qu'elle comprendra à ce moment-là qu'on peut très bien représenter la France et être musulmane, qu'on peut très bien représenter la France et ne pas être blanche, qu'on peut très bien représenter la France et porter le foulard. Et j'espère vraiment que les Français, les Françaises et le gouvernement se rendront compte que c'est eux qui, qui perdent le plus en, en prenant ces, ces décisions. David, um, despite months of campaigning by sporting organizations, France did not reverse its decision to ban French athletes who wear the hijab from participating in the Olympics. Human rights organizations have said that this contradicts France's pledge to deliver the first gender equal games and that this is a breach of human rights treaties. If these Olympic games are supposed to be about inclusivity and equality, what kind of message does this send? Well, it all depends who you're sending a message to, doesn't it? I mean, on the one hand, if you want to send a message to the far right in France, 
um, then they're probably going to be pretty pleased about it. It's a message that they're really pleased to hear. Uh, those who defend very, very strictly the uh, secular religious divide in uh, French society are probably pretty pleased with it. Those who have a much more open and inclusive sense of what constitutes human rights will be very disappointed and receiving a different message. I myself, um, you know, I go back to the point Gerard made earlier. Uh, I'm with the Pope on this is, you know, the real scandal is that, you know, people are dying in Gaza and Ukraine. And, you know, there's so many in like, really, this is the hill you want to die on. Um, I think it's really unfortunate myself. Um, so, but I understand that, you know, I'm not French and this is very much an, uh, an issue in France. Uh, Simon, let me get your take on this because you're there in Paris. Amnesty International says that hijab bans in French sports undermine efforts to make sports more inclusive, and they mean that Muslim players and athletes who wear hijab in France will continue to be discriminated against. I mean, how much does this impact and potentially mar these Olympic Games? I do find it quite shocking. It affects particularly religious Muslim women because, of course, it's not expected of men to wear the headscarf. And there's a ban on wearing religious symbols in if you're working for the state in public function. And before the Olympics, they interpret this to mean that if you're playing for France at the Olympics, you're representing the state in a public function. So that rule applies. But, of course, they don't look at athletes who might be wearing a crucifix. There's never been a fuss about people wearing Jewish yarmulkes in public office. It's very much been enforced against Muslims. And yes, of course, it discourages Muslim women from wanting to work in a state office where they can't wear the veil or from now wanting to play sport or being able to play sport for France. So yeah, it's a message of exclusivity. It's saying if you're a religious Muslim, there are places where you're not welcome. Gerard, I could be wrong. It looked to me like you were reacting to what uh, Simon was saying and that maybe you wanted to jump in. If so, please go ahead. No, I, I, I think uh, the games, the Olympic Games, are meant to foster fraternity or brotherhood or sisterhood among and, among, and peace and harmony among nations. Uh, but if, if you look back in history, the, the, there's always been moments when there's been controversy of one thing or another. I, I think the question of prohibiting people from wearing veils, I, I, I disagree with. I, I, I think uh, the, the Vatican is, for example, I, I've seen that they've come out strongly against discrimination. Um, most religious leaders come out strongly against religious discrimination in whatever form it may take. And uh, I think it's sad that, uh, and I agree with uh, Simon, uh, that uh, that it's that this is the situation in France, uh, the country which prides itself on equality, fraternity, and liberty, uh, still not uh, really giving concrete expression, full expression to what this means. And I, I think the 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 whole essence of religion is speaking about, you know, that we're all children of God, equal, and we should be able to express ourselves in different ways without coming under the hammer of the state in a given country. And there's a lot of persecution we know around the world in terms of religion, in terms of discrimination, in terms of racism. And uh, I think the games should be the antidote to that, and it should really foster a different spirit mm. where there's inclusivity and there is respect for diversity and respect for different expressions of that diversity. Mm. Uh, David, I just want to zoom out for a minute here and, and talk uh, more about the spectacle of the opening ceremony. Uh, you've written that for most of the 20th century, opening ceremonies were very formal, but that in 1984, the opening ceremony in Los Angeles, that that was very different. That was sort of a break with tradition, that it took on the look of kind of an open-air Broadway musical, and that since that opening, by and large, most of the ceremonies have been much more celebratory. They've included you know, music and pop stars and elements of concerts. Is what you saw in Paris, is that very much in keeping in line with this tradition? Yeah, totally. Over the last, you know, 30, 40 years, 
um, the host takes the opportunity to tell a story about itself, sometimes comprehensible, sometimes, as in the case of Athens 2004, pretty much incomprehensible to everybody. Um, they also have um, recognised that it's a form of entertainment. It's a show. Um, I mean, that's what happened in Los Angeles in 1984, is that you put people from Hollywood in charge. And indeed, the cost of an opening ceremony is pretty close, I would say, to a mid-range Hollywood blockbuster. Um, the arrival of Lionel Richie playing at the uh, closing ceremony of the uh, LA Games in 1984 was the first time you had a nailed-on pop star uh, as part of the Olympics. I suspect de Coubertin's probably turning in his grave every time he sees it. But that's now an absolutely essential element. Mm. Um, and it's why, in part, this uh, the opening ceremony is the thing that gets the biggest television audience. So I think France, Paris 2024, is very much in the tradition that's been developed over um, the last 40 years. Mm. Um, it was less pompous, um, maybe, and less grandiose um, than, say, Sochi 2014, mm -hmm. which was uh, primarily an exercise in Russian imperial history and ambition. It was much more um, easygoing, uh, occasionally humorous, mm -hmm. and not to be taken too seriously. Um, not a million miles, I would say, from London 2012's mm -hmm. opening ceremony. So, yeah, it's very much as one would expect. Obviously, on the river, not in the stadium is something mm. new. But, yeah, it's very much in the groove that everyone else has been pursuing for the last few decades. Uh, Simon, we only have about a minute and a half left. Uh, I just want to ask you, uh, what is your response to those who say that um, the opening ceremony was just pushing the envelope of what it means to be French and to those who say that this was about secular France trying to advance an agenda? I don't see it as secular France advancing an agenda so much as French people who design the ceremony saying to other French people, you know what, we are a diverse nation. So the message that I think French people received wasn't so much about religion, it was about ethnic diversity. You have a ceremony that starts with two men of Arab origin, Zinedine Zidane and the comedian Jamel Dubouz. It ends with two black French athletes lighting the Olympic flame. And in the middle of it, you have Aya Nakamura, the black French singer of Malian origin. Mm. And I think it's saying, you know what? Well, this is France with all its traditions mm. and all its history, but it's a diverse France. And so the controversy about religion, I think, sort mm. of comes at it at an unexpected angle. All right. Well, we have run out of time, so we're going to have to leave the conversation there. Thanks so much to all of our guests, Simon Cooper, David Goldblatt, and Gerard O'Connell. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on X. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Mohammed Jamjoum, and the whole team here. Bye for now. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.